Horrible conditions, horrid horrors, making tears. No heat in the winter, no cool in the summer, no raises at the end of the year. No bonuses, no vacations, no breaks. The beatings, the burdens continue while we bear them bearing grins. Feigning happiness, we sing slave songs, telling our masters just how glad we are. And while the music plays on, the taskmasters in the fields abuse weary, welted field workers. While the music plays on, the masters in the big house tote their stogies, dip their crumpets, sip their juleps, oblivious to all our sorrows. Jerry Johnson, I'm a writer from Danbury, Connecticut. Thank you, Philip, for inviting me here. And I thank all of you. You're a great crowd and great audience, and I love this place. The next piece is Meatloaf at the airport. <laughs> I'm eating a late lunch at an airport at a restaurant named after a notable, noted, well-known chef who deserves redundant adjectives for the food is just that good. Maybe it's not the healthiest choice. Turkey meatloaf wrapped in a thin slice of bacon, mashed potatoes smothered in a layer of light brown turkey flavored gravy. The meatloaf looked like it was gently placed by gentle hands on top of the potatoes while thin cut brown coat onion rings were sprinkled over the layered stack topped with one last spoon of that gravy just a dripping from top to bottom. I, <laughs> I have prime seating facing main concourses. It's two in the afternoon, prime space, prime time, prime people watching, and truly, it does take all kinds to make a world. I peer at large windows, gazing outside, I see several planes parked at several gates, and I think it's gonna be a long ride. <laughs> I dedicate this poem to writers everywhere. The title is Warriors. Keep on writing, you writing warriors. Write on, you writing warriors. Write on. Fight to the finish, finish the fight. Exemplify your strength, show your might. Wage your war by the way of your force. Your force, your weapons, pens, pencils, writing pads, keyboards, papers, some still use typewriters. None use the gun. None use the gun. None use the cannon. None use the missile. None use the bomb. Our fortresses, arsenals, armories consist of libraries laid in brick, mortar, sweat, tears, stone. Electronic bookshelves also made of digitized zeros and digitized ones. Our eyes see, read, our minds absorb, assess, our hearts feel, embrace. We put our hands to the work, to lands marred by brutality. We bring compassion, we bring calm. Right on, you riding warriors. Right on, you riding warriors. Right on. <laughs> Mission complete. My heart sinks from holding back tears ready to burst through the wall of my ice cold heart. Completed my duty, completed another mission, executed flawlessly on a grand scale. No committee to welcome me, no grasp of magnitude, no understanding of feet when I return. Ivory towers, still ivory towers, committees, Still committees, bureaucracies, still bureaucracies when I return. Though surrounded by my compatriots, I will sit in my seat alone when I return, as I do now. Another iced tea, sir? My gentle server asks. No, thank you, I reply. It's time to go home. <laughs> We still live in a land of monstrous giants. We still live in a land of monstrous giants. 
We still live in a land of grand dragons. We still live in a land of poisonous vipers. We still live in a land of terrible monstrosities. We still quake at the thought of them. We still shake in their presence. We still flee at the sight of them. And when they roar, we still scream. No one stands still, turns to face the giants. No one confronts the dragons. No one tangles with the vipers anymore. Everyone wants to run. Everyone wants to hide. Everyone wants comfort. Everyone wants complacency. Who is still willing to overthrow the giants? Who is still willing to slay the dragons? Who is still willing to crush the vipers? Who is still really willing to rid the land of its terrible monstrosities? This poem I wrote after one of my biggest projects. I had a I led a team, I was the captain of five people across the country, upgrading 250 computers. My team did 150, I did 100. I flew back to JFK, drove to Danbury, Connecticut. It was one o'clock in the morning when I got home. But before I went to bed, I wrote this poem. Home. At last. I'm very tired, weary from travel, weary from work, weary from stress, weary from pursuing dreams. My shirt drips, wet, hot, drippy, sweat. My trousers threadbare from continual daily wear. My shoes dried, shriveled from hard running through the sun, through the rain, through the haze. It is late at night, I reflect, I ponder, my heart sheds tears. Tonight I rest, tonight I dream, tonight I envision, tonight I celebrate. Battles fought well, fights well fought, dreams fulfilled, missions accomplished. This poem is titled, A Song for Samurai and Gladiators. <laughs> I take an intense walk from my apartment to the cliffs. I step hard up a steep incline. Out of the confines of my complex, I climb. Wireless earphones on, volume low, listening, musical scores, mixing surround sounds made by branch, perched, birds, singing. I imagine head bobbing virtuoso violinist stroking Stradivarius strings of fire, timpani thundering, snare drums cracking, trumpeters trumpets roaring triumph. Wet from sweat gazing at a horizon bathed in mid-June haze, I swig my water, dry my foreheads and my, as my imaginations fade. I dream of singing swords of samurai, gladiators dancing, celebrating freedom. I dream of devotion, dedication to a purpose, dedication to a mission. I dream of service towards weak, bearing burdens of worn, remembering forgotten orphans, homeless, widows, downtrodden, forsaken, forlorn. As I walk along tree-lined crests, crossing streams covered by bridges, Treading trails through gale-swept veils, tears roll down my ridges. As I dream, as I tread, striding with poise posed in my pace, tears again tread trails across fields of my wind-whipped face. Like samurai and gladiators, I learn to live, live to serve, lifting weary from depression, binding wounds, soothing burns. Like samurai, like gladiators, servants to emperors, queens, and kings, I'm servant to a vision, servant to a cause, servant to a dream. Wow. Last one. One of my favorites. The title is, She Said, Kiss Me Like You Kiss Her. <laughs> I was out one night having dinner alone when someone who looked just like a love from years past walked through the door. 
Now that I'm quite married and quite in love, I was a little taken aback by the twinge of conflict felt when I thought about it just a little more. She walked right in. She took her place two bar stools away. She placed her order, and I began to imagine hearing words from her lips calmly say, kiss me like you kiss her. The kiss makes a statement. The kiss sets the tone. Kiss her till her eyes see stars aglow. Kiss her till her ears hear sounds of song. Kiss her till her arms go limp. Kiss her till her eyelids wilt. Kiss her till she says you need to leave and go home. <laughs> As my rumination ceased, I asked for my check. As my concerned forehead creased, I picked up my bag and quickly headed for the exit. As I walked away and made it through the foyer, I considered the realization of my momentary consideration reaching the finality of a final foregone conclusion. That at the end of the day, and given my druthers, regarding fate forgotten feelings felt no longer. I could not hold, nor could I caress. I could not adore, nor could I cherish. I could not love, nor, nor could I miss. I could not care for, and neither could I kiss any other the way that I kiss her. Uh.